M's unfiltered, authentic, credible, genuine, with Emma Brain. Okay, so welcome to another episode of M's Unfiltered with me, Emma Brain. And finally, finally, I get to catch up with one of my favorite people in the world, Jamie Morton Hawley. How are you doing today? Wonderful. I just ate, so I'm super happy. <laughs> and this is the first time you've been here. I brought you to somewhere new in Dubai. I've never been here. I, li I don't live too far away, but it's beautiful. It's stunning, it's like a little piece of paradise. So we are at the farm at Alborari, and uh, mm. great food, by the way, great smoothies. I absolutely yeah. love it. But I wanted to um, speak to you on the channel because you're such an interesting person, and I love what you've done in the past. So I want to start kind of from the beginning in your photography career, because that to me is really interesting. How did you get into that? Um, I've been shooting since I was in high school. Yeah. My mother was an amateur photographer, and she had uh, an Olympus OM-2, I believe, a film camera. And uh, the electricity went out in our town. It was a brownout, and we decided to learn. She would teach me how to learn how to shoot candles. So we had a bunch of candles in the house, and I would shoot you know, with the film camera, and then we had them exposed to see what it would look like. And I just thought that was, I don't know, the coolest thing ever. Uh, and then digital has happened and more of my career, but I started learning photography originally with film. That's cool. As we all did, you know, there was nothing like going into the dark room. You can't see anything in your little, uh, little um, twisty things, putting the film on there and developing it all. Ah, those were the days. The throwback. <laughs> they still do it though. If you're lucky, I mean, I always say if you want to learn a craft, kind of the original way to do it is always good to just have. Um, in your mind because I think that helps you learn how to do things digitally if you know how to do things yeah. analog or however originally so even in college I would I had classes in photography and I would always bring a hoodie so that I could put like the, it didn't have to utilize the fact that I was in a dark room and I would just transfer things and stuff underneath my yeah. hoodie and I had a very particular hoodie that was gross uh, <laughs> and I would just do like all the transferring underneath in my hoodie and then um, develop the film after that, get it out of the canister and everything. And how did you get into the model photo shooting, ah. the model photography? So I started, um, I've done a lot of types, so I've done real estate, I was a second shooter for weddings, which is interesting, um, and then I transitioned over to lifestyle, which was more fashion portrait photography, and then I got into more of the swimwear because I lived in Florida, Miami. Lots of swimwear um, opportunities. And then I kind of just stuck yeah. to that and I started getting into more publishing. Yeah, okay. So, and specifically, I wanted to ask you about, you know, because you used to shoot for men's magazines. Yes. Some very, some quite high profile ones. We, yes. won't, we won't name them, but some high profile men's magazines. Um, how was that? How was it that like being as a female photographer in that world? And how did the models respond to you as opposed to having a male photographer? I can only assume or just from what people say, right? Um, but it's honestly not too different, maybe slightly, only because it's pretty male-dominated. Photog fashion photography is pretty male-dominated. Um, most of the time, if you're a model, you're going to assume you're going to be shot by a man, which is a fair assumption. But um, for me, maybe they may be a little bit more comfortable with any sort of exposure. Uh, but most of all, I just think it's the same, I, not too much different. I would assume. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. <laughs> um, but a lot of times I end up becoming friends with them, which yeah. is the uncommon part. Okay. So male photographers are not going to become potentially necessarily become close friends. And I have a lot of model friends who I originally met on set who are now really good close friends that I've had for years. But the, the, the imagery that you produced during those times is fantastic. Oh, I still see you. some of it on Instagram. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And, 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 you know, and very artistic, shall we say. Um, so how, how do you think that industry's changed given what we see in the world today? Um, the only unfortunate thing about publishing is now like where the funding and the, all of that goes. So instead of models back in the day would have to earn a position. They'd have to be 
a celebrity for some reason. They would have either philanthropy or um, they have uh, worked with certain famous people. You know, they you earn your yeah. just like runway models now. A lot of people say, oh well, they're nepo babies, or they somehow didn't earn this because they were popular on TikTok and now they're a runway model. It doesn't make sense. Um, models used to have to earn it and it was difficult and it was rare and it was special and now it seems like that that aspect of it has gone away so the same thing maybe potentially with publishing yeah is that if you can fund you can fund your career yeah you don't have to earn it okay and what brought you to Dubai from the US um, family <laughs> <laughs> but um, brought me to Dubai and then I decided to stay yeah. in Dubai um, and I've been here, we're talking eight years maybe. Okay, so it's, it's quite a good chunk of change yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you now do a lot of content creation, which is brilliant. Yes. You do a, you love your foodie stuff. I mean, over the lunch, you, you're all thinking like, oh, I'm taking photos of my food. I know, I know. It's your thing. But oh when you look at what you post out on socials, um, it looks beautiful every time. I'm yeah. so jealous. I wish I could create the same kind it's of content. It's a lot content. of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. I mean, this is the thing. Let's talk about that. People yeah. don't understand the sheer amount of work that yeah. goes into content creation they think they think literally people just sit there and go oh there's my food click post which some people yes, do but for <laughs> actual content creators yeah there's a lot of work involved yes so because of social media being king right um, companies some companies only have a website and an Instagram or a website Instagram and a TikTok um, and the traditional way of getting your product or your message to an audience has changed a lot but I think having someone who is professional who understands how to create content even if it is just with a phone yeah I mean it's a whole other universe than someone who just happens to have a phone and is taking pictures of their food the aesthetics the angles the post editing whole other thing when you come a professional and how have you I mean because literally in the palm of your hand, you yes. have a photographic recording editing studio in yes. this device. Yes. Um, which is insane. And people are creating amazing content just from their phone. You don't need a professional camera every day uh, anymore because it's all there in, in the palm of your hand. We argue that at work. You're 100% correct. I can do so much, especially living in a city in Dubai, right? In Dubai, we can't have paparazzi here in the UAE. So taking pictures of other people is a no-no. So the way we can get around things a lot of times is to use your phone. Your goal is not to take pictures of other people, but your goal is to be able to get content yeah. anywhere I need to capture yeah. it. And I can do it with their phone because you can't say I can't have my phone. Yeah. So I can pho photography, videography, um, anything, and then I can edit it on yeah. the go and potentially even get it to a client same day, which is crazy. It was, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, because you're absolutely right. So if you some places in Dubai you pull out a professional camera and no. the security are coming over go have you got yeah. a shooting permit for that you yeah. can't take photos da, 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 da. and all the rest of it commercial rights but with phones it's it's really not an issue and with social media I know it's something you and I sit and let's face it we sit and bitch about it quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> true, it true, us. true. It drives us crazy. And yes. look, we have so many platforms now Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, is YouTube. Snapchat Rumble, MyTalk. There's so many things that are, are launching, and it's like, it's so confusing what platforms you should use and what content you should put on various platforms. And all the ag algorithms are changing, and people complaining they don't get views or whatever. And it just, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute minefield. Mm. So how do you feel and what are your favorite platforms right now? Personal favorite? Um, I still love Instagram. Me, uh, me too. Yeah, I still love easy. Instagram, but I have to like, inst there's also like a forced nature to that. But I don't do well on TikTok uh, for, certain re for a few yeah, reasons. Yeah. Um, I'm not a Twitter person. I'm not going to sit there and my feelings i'm not a word vomiter I, I tweet all the time my twitter family is insane my twi twitter fam is insane and there's but i love it because they're so engaging with me see that's Every the nature of the platform tweet yes likes replies retweets they, they but mine are super engaging my audience there. i wouldn't survive on that i because it would never i would find no reason to end it's like playing a video game that you love like i can't do video game maybe that's why i don't play video games anymore at all 
because I will never stop. I'll forget my bodily functions. Yeah. I will just play forever. So I feel like Twitter is that for me. I will just yeah. be talking to people all day and where's the time and I, my life is gone. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm a visually aesthetic person so I like the aesthetic nature of creating a feed and creating content for a feed and that is how Instagram works. I mean, the, but they've just changed it though. They're oh, now God. saying, oh, God, for Instagram, you need to post six stories a day, two morning, two afternoon, yes, two evening. I saw that. You need to do a post every day. Every day. Um, and they prefer a carousel yeah. um, and or a reel. And I'm sitting there going, who's got time for that? Yeah, it encourages you to actually batch capture content and schedule it. Meaning like, you you go somewhere or you have a day where you create content yeah and then you bat you batch create so you create all your content for x amount of days and schedule it yeah because now they have an internal scheduler so they to me do? i gotta find that you gotta show me where that yes. is i missed it clearly. you can schedule <laughs> your content and it'll just go out so to me what it does is encourages that but it also then makes you not feel like you need to engage yeah. in order to get that visibility and and, and, and speaking of aesthetic, because mm. we know social media has got a problem with, I, I want to bring kind of the youngsters into it with a lot of people using filters and editing yeah. and snatching wastes and making things and yeah. all this kind of thing. So we get a fake reality. It's not even a, it's, right. it's, it's, it's curated, not real. curated. It's yeah. curated mm -hmm. reality. It doesn't look real. People are not their real genuine selves on no. social media. So how do, I mean, I think it affects youngsters hugely it because is, because yeah. they have a false sense of what is real and false expectations of what can actually be achieved i mean if i look at some of the filters i think i was on on tiktok it was the so bold the glamour AI. i was oh. like and it was so funny pinky patel she's a huge tiktoker mm. um she did a thing she was like who's the moron using this filter and i, I went, I'm, I'm the moron pinky and she I'm actually responded she was did like she really she used she was like at least you're owning it ems yeah, you're yeah, owning yeah. it so yeah. it's all good but but people have actually used that i had friends when like it's i tried this filter and i immediately made an appointment to have lips done microblading fillers everything and i'm like oh my god i saw a video of a plastic surgeon who literally said that that's completely reinforces it he was just like people are saying can i look like this filter yeah. so that i can look good in photos he said this is the problem people are coming asking for work to be done so they can look good in a photo yeah but the thought of what it looks like in real life is not in their mind yeah and i think that they don't even it's not even like i don't even care i care if i look good in a photo and if that's your theory retouch your pictures yeah. that doesn't make sense to me like if you're going to do that change your pictures because you look great in real life but for some reason you think you don't look good in pictures because these cameras are not an eye yeah it's not reality so it's being changed because it's of the angle and the lighting and all this stuff which is negligible in real life yeah. So he's like, people are asking for to get work done to, so that they can look good exactly. in a picture. And it's, it's so funny that you say that because I have so many people say to me, they, they look at my stuff online and they look at me and go, you look so much better in real life. What the hell is wrong with your cameras? <laughs> it's what's wrong with every camera. This doesn't capture. I mean, look at this. There's three different lenses. This is not real. This is, and these, the lens on the front of this is only good at a certain distance. If you get any further or any closer, it's going to start to warp certain parts of your face from different angles. But if you, if you knew that about photography, you understand it. Most people don't, don't understand it or they don't, it doesn't matter either yeah. way. And I feel like so many people need validation through sure. social media and it's something that we've discussed at length. The buying of followers, the buying of likes, the buying of comments, the buying of views. It's a, it's a vicious cycle, but it's like, how can you ever, and I've seen it when I've been hosting events and speaking to people from marketing agencies and, mm. and marketing and PR professionals in other territories, and they're like, now everyone is going for the micro and nano influencers. Oh, the nano. Because they have a small curated community, and I focus word community, yes. that they actively engage with. They're like, to hell with these people that have got hundreds of thousands of followers because it's not a community yeah and if they bought them yeah. it, it's not it's it's absolutely nonsense here's the, here's the thing with that and you're 100 percent correct the the issue now that that brands are realizing is that 
they're, everyone's caring about their ROI far more than they ever did, and it's very difficult to calculate that with social media, right? Because what is your intention with your money? Yeah. There's different kinds of ads, right? Is this for awareness? Is this for direct to sales? Like, what is your goal? And a lot of people will DM me saying, hey, just use our affiliate code and we'll give you this $12 thing for free. And I go, what is your goal? Are you trying to get awareness of your brand, awareness of this product, or are you trying to make me a salesperson for your company? Yeah. So companies have a lot, uh, hard time understanding that, but in essence, the large influencers are very, very expensive. It's very hard to check their ROI. Then you look at their back end, they go, well, only 30% of your followers are real. Yeah. And then the whole bot concept doesn't calculate to them because they go, well, if they used a hashtag, that also can have other implications inside of that hashtag. They could have gotten 300 followers that are all bots because they used a, a certain hashtag. So they may not have bought them, or they may have, or both. So to me, it makes total sense that these companies are going after people with 3,000 followers, 3,700 followers, because they look at their engagement percentages and they're yeah. like, wait a second. I don't have to pay Kim Kardashian a million dollars. I can pay this man or woman $300, yeah. $400. How many of those little ones can I pay? And the percentage of their followers who believe them yeah. and go, well, if Emma says this lip gloss is great, I mean, I'll buy it. I mean, and you get a far bigger reach that way. Oh, yeah. Overall, it's, it's huge. The genu it's the genuine nature of yeah. it as well. And they tr there's a trust and believability. And that is, it, you can't buy that. Yeah, absolutely. And. <laughs> Uh, with socials, I'm a firm believer in just looking at stuff that brings value to you, stuff that you're genuinely interested in, mm. it educates you, entertains mm. you, brings you positivity, whatever. I mean, I've recently unfollowed 700 accounts. I gave her a high five. I was like, it yeah. felt so good. But the amount of people that were in my DMs going, why do you unfollow me? And I, and I had to kind yes. of tactfully say, I'm really sorry, but I'm not interested in you posting about your kids every day. I'm not, yeah. inter I'm not interested in your content. And therefore, and I, and I used this analogy in another, in another video. It's like you sitting at a table and some of the people at your table are friends, some are acquaintances, some are guests. Some people will actively interact and engage. Mm -hmm. Some people might engage. Some of them will just sit there and not look at anything and not do anything. Why do you want those people at your table? If I'm not doing that yeah. for you, why do you want me at your table? And yeah. if, if you aren't doing that for me, why do I want you at my table? Every day. And you I've, want me at your table every day. And I've removed <laughs> followers as well yes. because they don't interact with yes. me. Yes. I understand it. I, I, I encourage her to do this. I was like, it's okay, because here's the, cause that same thing happened to me. I got the DMs going, why'd you unfollow me? Because it's very personal and for a lot of people, and I totally understand that. But I am not valuable to you if I don't look at your content, if I don't engage, I don't comment, I don't like. And I'm, a, I'm pretty much, I'm looked at the same as a bot. And that's what I think a lot of companies, brands, human beings don't understand is I am the equivalent of a boss if I follow you and don't engage. Yeah. And it's worse if I see your content on my feed and then I also don't engage. Yeah, exactly. That hurts you so much. So for me, I go, I'm going to unfollow and then maybe if you still wanna follow me or you look at my Instagram stories and you clicked heart or you engaged, I'll, get, I'll see it, I'll go and I'll go brrr and I'll spam you. And that happens all the time and people will screenshot and post it in their stories and be like, oh my God, Jamie, thank you for coming over and visiting my page. I don't follow you. So I just showed the algorithm, whatever you want to call it, that all of your content is valuable to someone who doesn't follow you. Yeah. That's a bing. That's good. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. No, but really, like it's... It's so confusing it these is. days, really. So. It is. Ah, oh, so many things uh, that we've talked about. Amazing. Thank you so much. Which, look, you've got several accounts now. Which which, pe oh, which please, account are we looking at? Which is, which is your most active and people that you, the account that you want people to engage with right now? Oh God, I don't know. I, I have one for myself. Yes. I have one now that I'm starting for a more public persona that I don't mind is looked at as an influencer, meaning engaging and responding and all that stuff. And then I won for my photography. Those are my three main accounts. Okay, I will tag them all in this video. No, don't. <laughs> Which one do you want me to put in this um, video? I guess my public one. My public is fine. Yeah. <laughs> She'll post it somewhere. Here, here. Oh, 
it'll yeah. be around somewhere in the place. Yeah. Jamie, thanks so much. Thanks for joining Yay. me for lunch. I'm glad I could show you somewhere new in Dubai as well. I know. We should go again. We should run around Dubai and, and see, see stuff, stuff we've never seen. It's amazing. Yes. Oh, I've, I've got lots. I've got lots. I like influencing people to go to go to places unknown. Yes. <laughs> so come to the farm. It's beautiful. No, honestly, you can see see how nice it is around here. It's very airy. There's indoor, outdoor places. Food is really fresh. It's good. It's mm. very good. We'll come back and do it. Do a foodie review. That would be great. Yes. Um, thanks for joining me for another episode of M's Unfiltered. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye.